Howdy, howdy. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Today's video, we are gonna talk about some of the products that we supply and sell at Hammer Hay. A little background on our farm is it's a hundred year old family farm. Uh, I grew up here and now me and my wife and kids live here. We grew up with uh, beef cattle, uh, made some hay, a little bit of corn. That's kind of what, what I remember. And then after graduation, my, my dad ended up moving away. We started getting a little bit more involved when they moved out. We did corn and then soybeans, and then we ended up getting into uh, hay for horses, and then slowly kind of got into niched markets. So this, yes, this is still a hobby. I speak for myself here. I, I enjoy doing it. I think it was a great childhood uh, memory. You know, allows you to develop a work ethic, you know, be productive, enjoy spending time with, with your family. For those of you who have some farming history or growing up on the farm, you kind of know uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, mostly, it's usually a good experience, but it, it definitely can be tough. This is just a hobby. Money pit, what we like to refer to, but it's fun. So that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to get across. I wanted to talk to you about hay. We started selling to the cow in the horse market. That's primarily where we went with all of our acreage into hay. Mostly grasses with a little mix, legumes, alfalfa, or... or volunteer red clover then in 2015 uh one of the neighbors up the road actually had suggested that we should get into certified noxious weed free hay and that hay is primarily used when you head out west to uh, the dakotas or idaho or montana when you're on public land you have to have this special certified hay and noxious weeds are pretty much anything that spreads like wildfire and kind of takes over the ecosystem and or is kind of dangerous for animals to eat as well so leafy spurge canada thistle orealism what i think the reason why they do that out west is tr to try and mitigate uh, some of the weed seeds uh, from different states going into their state. Uh, that's kind of my understanding of it. I don't ride horses. I pretty much just sell hay. So we got into that market and this is what the tags look like for the state of Minnesota. So every single bale that we sell is certified hay. It goes through a process. We have an agency that comes out 10 days before we're about to harvest. We have to cut a 10 foot barrier around our entire fields. And we have to make sure that there's no noxious weeds there. So weeks before we're going out there hand picking weeds. Um, we try and get away from spraying just because if, if you can handle it by picking, it's better to just pick it out of there, get rid of the plant completely, uh, put it in a bag, let it sit there and die so it doesn't re-germinate some where else uh so we yeah you'll here's some pictures of us walking through the fields with some trash bags and then after that's done they have to come through make sure that there's zero noxious weeds there once there's zero noxious weeds and a standard process cut dry rake bale we put them all into small square bales because that's what people primarily use when they head out west so did that for a little bit you only sell about 10 15 bales maybe at a time. So it's a little bit more effort, obviously tagging every single bale and then paying for that agency to come out here and, and certify the product as well. So we try to niche down as much as we possibly can. We don't have hundreds of acres, so we try and uh, do the most that we can with our land. One of the big things with selling hay is customer service, obviously. You gotta have a good relationship with your hay customer and hay customers have to have a good relationship with their hay buyers as well. What Pete is trying to say here when he says, hey buyer, he actually means hey producer. He'll most likely say hey buyer again. So whenever he says hey buyer, just think hey producer. I believe the hay customers are looking for a decent product at a decent price and uh, and the hay buyers are looking for good buyers, you know. Hay buyers are looking for good buyers. Hay buyers are looking for good buyers. Hay producers are looking for good customers. Hey, producers are looking for good customers. That's that's what he was trying to say. Carry on. Uh, for example, when we were doing horse hay, uh, a lot of good customers that we have, I would say, hey, the hay is ready and they'd be out here in the next hour picking it up off the field so we wouldn't have to unstack it off the hay wagons, put it away in our hay barn. That was great for us. We could sell it directly off the field. The other thing, when we got into horse hay, could never find the right ratio between grass and alfalfa. You know, people wanted 60, 40, 70, 30, 50, 50, whatever the case may be, every single person was different. And we found it kind of hard to have that consistency through the field.
yield and determining that right number. Um, so what we ended up going towards is more of a mono crop. We could sell straight grass and if they wanted to make their own ratio, uh, say they wanted 25, 75, 25 alfalfa and 75 grasses, uh, that would mean just three flakes of grasses and one flake of alfalfa. So we kind of stuck to the straight grasses. It's what we found a lot of our customers liked. Didn't sell a whole lot of straight alfalfa. Uh, thought about getting into cubes, but uh, there's honestly no demand for it for our trail riders. We planted our first Timothy field. If you don't know what Timothy looks like as a grass, it kind of looks like this right here. This is the head of the Timothy. We got into straight Timothy, started selling that for trail riding hay, made a decent product. And then we got into selling to rabbits, chinchillas, and guinea pig owners. You know, I've seen people come buy hay from us that have maybe one or two rabbits. And then sometimes people have 40 rabbits. For those people that have a lot of rabbits, it's nice to kind of find a local supplier of hay otherwise um, gets pretty expensive for uh, hay that's packaged and sold at big retailers so we got into that market started advertising for it we would sell 50 pound hay bales uh, which was kind of a lot of hay for rabbits we got into making half bales as well I'll show you what a half bale looks like here so here's a half bale. This is nice. It's probably 20, 25 pounds of hay. A little bit more manageable for people with one or two rabbits. Otherwise, uh, we have a lot of customers who will take these full-size hay bales. So here's the tag that I was talking about. This tag indicates that it's certified noxious weed-free. We do our quality control in the hay field. So we're picking up garbage alongside of the road. We're picking the noxious weeds out of the field, uh, even the non-noxious weeds, because we want to sell straight Timothy. And when you start tearing bales apart, it tends to turn a little bit more dusty and into chaff. Chaff is pretty much just uh, hay that kind of crumbles into dust. So we we package it once, we bale it when it's, I don't know, 15% moisture, and then we let it kind of sit in our barns and uh, wick out the moisture that it needs to. The hard thing with Timothy is it's a, it's a cool season grass, so it's got a great first crop. Second and third crop are almost non-existent, so we primarily just cut our first crop. The other thing that you see with Timothy as well is when you harvest Timothy, you want to make sure that you're out there right as the first seed head is starting to develop. So once you start seeing this, that's when you wanna be out there. So you gotta balance that with taking a look at the forecast, seeing if you got you know three to four days where you can actually put up quality hay. Um, because if it heads out and you miss that window, Timothy likes to get coarse and coarse is just thicker of a stem, not as, not as pleasant to chew on. When you're thinking of hay, you kind of want that soft hay. Right as it starts to head, we wanna knock it down. That way it's still kind of not as coarse and uh, it still has those seed heads. We tend to see that our customers like to see those Timothy seed heads. Some bunnies like it, some bunnies don't. So the other thing that we try and do is we try and do a hay analysis where we get to sample a core of each one of these bales and then we send it into the lab, figure out, you know, the crude protein, the fiber. Here's a sheet of kind of what we're looking for. So the nice thing about that is rabbit owners can say, hey, I just started uh, with this new hay company. They gave me a hay analysis. They can bring it directly to their veterinarian to see, hey, is anything jumping out at me where you know, the needs for my rabbit have to have something else other than what's provided here. One of the other thing that's pretty important for hay is storage. So these small square bales, you can't store them outside. Uh, so they have to be inside. And one way that we do it is we store it in this building right here. We put a vapor barrier of plastic underneath here and then pallets. And then we also put a layer of, uh, of our certified straw as well to kind of keep it up off the ground. There's a lot of moisture that comes from the ground. So we want to make sure that it stops right there. And it allows some of the airflow to go through these pallets. Uh, there's another thing that we do sometimes that you have issues with mice. Uh, so what we do is we actually take some of these fabric softener scent and we'll stick them in these pallets right here or in the side right here. The nice little runway for mice. That's kind of our protection. Obviously you want to kind of seal it up because mice can do some serious damage. The biggest pain is where they bite the twine. So you'll, you know, you'll pick up a, a bale and there'll be one strand left and it'll just explode on you. It's it's super frustrating. So yeah, that's kind of what we do with our certified hay products. Uh, we sell it to rabbit owners, guinea pig owners, chinchilla owners, and uh, we try and make the best product possible. A lot of times we'll sell a single bale at a time, which is fine. I mean, we probably only make 
two or 300 a year. The other nice thing that we try and do for our customers as well is we wrap them. So a lot of our customers, they don't generally have a, like a pickup truck. It could be a small vehicle, you know, a small car, a minivan. What we like to do is wrap them in heavy duty contractor bags. This stuff works really great. A few things that I like about it is that it's thick and it's got the wing tie bags. Here's a video of me putting a bale into a bag. It works pretty good. We do not put these in the bags right away. We usually set up an appointment with our customers and then we'll package up the bales. You don't wanna store hay in a bag, you know, especially if you get some humidity. The bags are primarily used just for transport so you don't get it all over your vehicle. Otherwise you will be vacuuming it out the vehicle. If you don't have kids, that makes it a little more tough. We need that over here. That's gonna be our camera stand. You guys bring it over here, bring it over there. So the other thing that I wanted to bring up, so this is our Timothy product. Just wanted to kind of show you the differences between new, these two. Um, like I was saying, this does a usually only one crop a year because it, it doesn't like to grow in the heat of the summer. Orchard, uh, we've had some luck with it. We'd had years where we get two crops, sometimes three, and then second and third crop are pretty awesome. So we'll get customers that ask for second and third crop of Timothy. And if the rabbit or the chinchilla or the the owner doesn't like the Timothy, usually what I try and do is I send a, along a sample of this orchard grass. This orchard grass is nice because it's a lot softer. Man, it is just pretty. It's got that darker green color as well. Sometimes the owners are actually allergic to Timothy Will the, where they all actually will take some of the orchard grasses. It's all about preference. Just going back to that whole customer service thing, that's that's very important. Anyone that reaches out, usually I you know say, hey, if you don't wanna buy a half bale or a full size bale, come out to the farm, let's chat, let me know if you have have any questions i'll show you some of the hay analysis and i'll send you home with a free sample you know probably like two or three pounds of of hay it's it's all about that customer service you know we want to make that sale as well we want to build relationships with our customers love the fact that they're supporting a local farm we want to return return the favor with the best customer service we have possible but yeah that's kind of the differences between these two like i said straight timothy straight orchard you know this summer we'll we'll be making some hay we got two new planted fields of Timothy and Orchard. Uh, sometimes first crop is usually a little weedy, so we'll get out there, try and pick right away and certify the product, obviously. That certified tag, you know, um, is hopefully an indicator of, of, of quality hay. Uh, that's what's important to us. So yeah, that's, uh, hopefully this was a little interesting. Let me know what you think if you're, if you're looking for some Timothy hay or if you know anyone that's looking for uh, rabbit, chinchilla, guinea pig, hay, you know, have them reach out to us. We're, we're right in Anoka County in Minnesota. That's all I have to say about that. But yeah, the boys want to do some uh, snow clearing. Do a video videotaping. You guys want to move some snow? Yeah! Yeah! So uh, we're going to do some snow moving. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see ya.